Hey everybody, it's Jen from Scan and Cut Jam Sessions and Scan and Cut Canvas and Scala Help on Facebook. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to show you how to do a really cool wood transfer using vinyl. Okay, I have my fi uh, file all made up. And you know how some of you will come and ask me how to get things all stuck together so that you can move them around? Well, this is what I talk about. There's those three squares that line up. Here's the unify button. So after you come in, let's go ahead, let's back out here so I can show all this to you. Let's come into our save data. Okay, let's make this page one. Okay, so you hit your first OK button. The square, the circle, the triangle, come up here. That one's highlighted, but come into this one. Then select that button, the circle, square, triangle. They all light up. Click OK. Click that unify. Okay. All right, so now we can move it all the way up and over to the corner so that we can use uh, the least amount of vinyl possible. Let's click OK. Cut. All right. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it. This is a real quick FYI why this is cutting. I made this second page on a 12 by 24 mat. And as I brought it over to the cutter, it was just a 12 by 9 inch. You can, even though it's made on a 12 by 24 and exported, so saved, as a 12 by 24 design, you can actually change it in the machine to a 12 by 12 mat. Okay? So it is interchangeable. If, even if it's saved on a 12 by 24 mat, you can change it in the machine and change it over to a 12 by 12 mat. Okay, and since I'm going to be using this vinyl <clears throat> as stencil, I'm actually going to weed out the letters. So weed out what you would normally keep and keep the background. Okay, so now I'm out here in my shop <clears throat> and I have the wood already cut and I have the sign laid out and as you see this one is longer than 24 so I attached it with just the little corner tabs and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my low tack adhesive and then I'll show you how I go about making sure that it doesn't leak okay and you may have seen some spots on here like right here that's missing don't worry about that I have some right here right there that would, when I go to paint I just go ahead and I start dabbing when I get to this spot I don't paint right there okay I go around it paint the rest of the stuff <clears throat> then when this one up here dries I pick this up move it down here and then I paint over it so you don't have to panic if you accidentally pick that up remove it and don't notice it and throw it away okay okay so I start by just laying my low tech transfer tape so I can get this in clear I just start by laying it right here lay it down and I start smoothing it and I'm gonna peel the back off as I go because I don't want to expose it prematurely and have it stick and create an awful mess like I normally do I'm famous for that you all know that you see it every time I do something like this so just go ahead and start slowly peeling it back and if you have wonderful kids that like helping you they can peel as you go but I love making these signs out of barn wood but unfortunately it's becoming so popular that it's hard for a lot of people to get without paying an arm and a leg for it but it's beautiful And I'm lucky where I live, I get a lot of it free. So just keep working your way down. Pull it up here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm getting to the joins. I'm 
Now, I don't care what any of the paper on the sides look like, but I do care what the letters look like. So you just want to make sure that all of your letters are clear, that nothing is blocking them. And your swirls and all that or whatever font you have is clear. Now this is the Samantha font. This font is never free. If you want to make designs such as this and sell them, you do need to have a commercial license. And these things for me are not for sale. Anything that I make, I do not sell. That's why when y'all ask what a good price would be, it's really hard for me to tell because um, everything I make, I don't sell. I usually just have people reimburse me for the cost of things um, if I do make something for someone or just have them buy the materials for it and I'll make it for them. But all this stuff like this that has licenses that you need, I don't do that. I just make it for family members. Okay. All right, so I have all the transfer tape on there. Now I want to peel it off. Peel this slowly off here, and this vinyl is 651. Um, it's an older kind of vinyl, and I actually had somebody tell me that this vinyl expires in about four months, which I in turn asked them. Well, I kind of think that's strange because how could it expire when it's stored in a temperature controlled environment away from bright sunlight, high, extreme heat, extreme cold, all that good stuff when uh, 651 is made for outdoor use and it has like a five year life. I didn't understand that. I still don't. They didn't, never responded to me when I asked them that either. I think somebody was trying to pull the wool over my eye. Alright, I need to trim this out because I forgot to trim the back of this. Okay, let me see, focus this in a little better. Look at that hack job. You know what? Doesn't matter. Does not matter how cruddy that looks because all we care about is that these places are open because this is what's going to take the paint. This can look as horrible as you want it to look. <clears throat> because it's not going to show. Alright, so we have another one. I don't know why I forgot to trim this out. Oh, my mind is tons of different other places right now. That's probably why. Okay. So, let me go over here. Let's see if this... I'm just using a regular old straight razor type of thing. So as I trim this off, I put that piece over there. So when I need it, because I know I'm probably going to need it, I can just bring it back. Where's my little tool at? I had a day gone doctor's appointment today and I hate going to the doctors. It seems anymore I need to change my address to the doctors. And it's got me kind of preoccupied. Okay. So just roll that. And we've got a couple little tiny holes there. So I'm going to go cut and fill them and be right back. Okay, so now I'm ready to uh, spray the back of this. 
Okay. What I use is just a spray adhesive. I use Krylon. Um, and it's an all-purpose spray adhesive. So you can probably use one of the regular ones like the spray that we use. And I just put a light coat all over this, including the opening. You don't have to worry about it. Just a light coating, but make sure you hit every part of it. And this, what this does is it helps it adhere this 651 down so that it does not leak under under the vinyl. Make sure I don't get any on my camera lens. Oh no, that would not be good. Okay. Now I'm going to take it over and put it on my wood. Okay, and here's how I have it laying. So I put that <clears throat> white backing sheet back on the vinyl. And I just have the top part touching it. Okay, so I can make sure that it's even and it's not all getting pre-stuck down. Alright, so I'm going to get busy adhering it down. Okay, I'm going to give you a little shot here of how I do this. I actually hold it up in the air. I get kind of rough because I use this rubber tipped. So I get kind of rough with it a little bit. And I hold it up and just roll as I go. And make sure your wood is on a nice firm surface. Back my saw horses up so when I hit this end it doesn't come up and smack me in the head. Don't be afraid to get in there and really push it around because you want this to stick really well. But with the adhesive on there, I have yet to have any leak. But when you paint, a lot of times, um, like when I paint, I normally thin mine out, my, my acrylic paint, because it flows easier and you know when you paint, you want it to flow real easy. Um, <clears throat> I do still thin mine, but not nearly as much. Only, I would say I only thin it about a quarter of the way of what I normally do. So maybe like a two to one. So just go ahead and keep, keep rubbing it over there. You will actually see the wood grain start to appear in your vinyl. And that's what you want to see. Okay. Okay, I went ahead and I sprayed it um, with a little bit of sealer. Like a primer, I guess some people call it. And that helps seal the board so this paint doesn't require so many coats. Now what I've done is I've went ahead and put some cream color paint. <laughs> this is my boards I use, my plastic boards to paint on. It's just reusable boards. I do not use brushes like this because these bristles get underneath there and that's why you stenciling can look so crappy sometimes. I just use um, these sponges, makeup sponges, makeup wedges. Go through and make sure your little sticky stuff is still stuck down. But with these makeup sponges, it's really nice though because it's very forgiving. Because you're just pouncing straight up and down. You're not rubbing, you're not twisting. And with this paint, um, what I do is I take the makeup sponge um, and I dip it in the, I dip it in the, uh, what's that called, water get it wet and I leave most of the water in there and then I um, bring it over and 
let the paint get thinned out by just the water that's in that brush there. Alright, so I'm going to move this over a little bit so there's a little bit of space there. And you'll notice when you move these and stick these down, they're stuck. They don't want to move. That glue really does work. Alright. That glue sticks this stuff down really good. Um, and you can charge quite a bit for these signs, especially if they're made of barn wood. Because you can't find them anymore. And personalized signs, they go for quite a bit of money. Um, for the, a sign like this, especially made with the Samantha font, you could easily get a hundred dollars for it. Okay, so don't be afraid to charge for your work. If it's quality work, don't be afraid to charge for it. Okay, let me check and make sure you can see what I'm doing and I'm not way out. And... Can you see me? Nope. Of course you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm all the way up at the top here. And I just start by pouncing. And you can leave some spots bare. It doesn't have to be totally covered because, again, this is barn wood, so you want it to look um, kind of antique looking. Or at least my family, this is the type of look that we like. Um, but you also be aware that when you pull this away, you're just going to have these thin... Uh, line so you do want to cover you know most of it just be careful that your paint is not watered down okay so I'm going to go through and I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep pouncing straight up and down seal um, just with your hand if you need to as you're moving through it if you notice that um, Places have popped up which you know sometimes they will but it's really easy to reseal it as you go through Okay, and I'll come back in a little bit and remember the spots that are bare um, That you may rip up like I do or they may get stuck to your arm like what happened to me Just skip those parts Okay, do the parts that are on there and then replace like I'll take this one and this one and bring it up here and do that but just skip it and come back to it I'll be back in a bit okay so I have it all painted except for the two spots that are missing so let me come up here and I'll pop this one off This one right here, I'll take this, move it right over here, yeah, looks good, and I'll take this one, and just kind of work it up gently, try not to stretch it, sorry. Not to stretch it and put it over here. Oops. Don't let it stick to your fingers. Ow. Helps if you don't have three inches of paint stuck to you. Lay it down. And then smooth it out. Find a finger that doesn't have paint on it and squash it down. There. Okay, so they're both squashed down. Looking good. Alright, grab your dauber and lightly go over both of them and remember it's just straight up and down you don't want to do any twisting no fancy stuff ok 
just straight up and down. Okay, so now we're going to wait for it all to dry and then we'll rip the vinyl off it. Okay, so let's pull some vinyl. You're going to have lots of little pieces that you got to go in and pull off and just grab it and start ripping. people you know when you make these things they just don't understand how much time really goes into doing all this stuff oh, let me grab my pick but as you see it comes out gosh darn it comes out really good really clean clear no leaks underneath really really nice and normally like right in here especially with that uh, deep kind of hollowing out of where the grain is you'd think it would get in there and just run crazy but it doesn't helps too when you don't have really thin paint oops And you're just going to come through here and pull out all the little pieces of vinyl. And there is no residue from the adhesive left on here, which is nice. You'd think it'd be all sticky and gross. It's not. just sticks to the back of the vinyl and you would think that it would cover up the holes so that you couldn't paint it doesn't it allows you to paint right through it keep going and I'll come back no sense you sitting here watching me rip off all these extra pieces of vinyl okay so I'll be back in a minute okay so here it is all done it's all completely done up it looks really good but I don't like um, a really strong paint so what I do is I go ahead and I actually sand it now what's really good about old barn wood at least this kind that I use is that when you sand it it doesn't um, it doesn't return to like the full color of like a normal wood it actually keeps the old hue still so I just go ahead sand through here if there's some really bright spots I just knock them down so it's all going to look like it's been here a little while and if you like the like speckling the old you know the old that type of look you can go ahead and do that too but I don't I just leave it like this and just hit it a little bit knock that brightness down bring it back don't want to do it too much because I don't want to lose the readability of it so I'm going to actually take it out in the daylight and do it okay so here she is fully done looks beautiful all right guys thanks for watching have a good day if you have any questions contact me at scan and cut canvas and scale help at facebook.com thanks